Hey everybody, Jake Reichbart here. Today I'm going to share with you a lengthy lesson excerpt. So have your guitars ready and we're going to have some fun together arranging a song. Perhaps you've seen some of my many hundreds of solo guitar arrangements I have here on YouTube and the inspiration for these arrangements is right here behind me as you can see. I grew up with this with these vinyls and uh, I draw pretty much from any kind of style imaginable from the pop music of the past hundred years. Everything from Glenn Miller to Van Halen, Alan Holdsworth to Motown, and pretty much anything in between. Beatles, I have perhaps uh, 25 Beatles song arrangements, 20 Steely Dan song arrangements, same for uh, Stevie Wonder, rock, hard rock, D Deep Purple, Led Zeppelin, and of course tons and tons of classic jazz standards from the 40s and 50s, bebop, dance tunes, movie themes. And if you want to learn how to arrange any of these songs for solo guitar, I can teach you. Just like the excerpt that you're about to watch, which comes from a lesson that runs about 90 minutes, I have nearly 200 additional titles and they are mostly song specific. I enjoy teaching through specific songs because I can show you hands-on how I approach arranging a song. What's nice about these lessons is that I don't just tell you do this and you're done, but rather I'll take you through three or four or five different ways to play the same passage. I'll work with you on dynamics, on articulation, and a hundred other things that you cannot just put to paper. As I mentioned, these lessons run approximately 90 minutes. The introduction, which runs usually 15 minutes, focuses on the right hand and rhythm. And in this introduction, I go through my three pillars of rhythmic arranging. The first principle being melody and bass only. The second being rhythmic arpeggiation. And the third, of course, the down stroke that I play with my right hand fingernails to produce that backbeat that everybody asks me about. Nevertheless, I do have two main method lessons. The first one, how to arrange any song for solo guitar running two hours, and also an introduction to fingerstyle guitar and solo guitar arranging running two hours and 40 minutes. The information about these lessons, the cost, my full lesson list, as well as a link to the full performance of the song that we're working on today is below in the information. So expand the information, take a look, and let's get started. I performed the song in the key of B, which, if memory serves, is in fact the original key of the song, as performed by Chicago. And although I do take some liberties with the form, there are a couple of little tags that I may play twice or three times or, or fewer times. And even though I may most likely, and I will elaborate this on this later, take a solo, an improvised solo on the form, uh, for the most part, I do perform all the different sections of the song as they were performed by the band. So let's start at the beginning. Introduction. So let me, before talking about the rhythms, uh, tell you about these chords. What we have here is a B triad, uh, an F sharp, B, and D sharp played in, in my case, with the pinky uh, holding down these three notes on strings four, three, and two on the fourth fret. And for those of you who have it hard with the fourth finger, you can also do this with the third finger. It's a little bit more tricky if you want to do this with separate fingers because you have to kind of do more jumping around. But if this is the preferred method for you, fingering-wise, then that's fine with me. I would prefer to do it with third finger or fourth. In fact, if you do it with a third finger, you get to keep your third finger, the tip of it, on the F sharp, and that might be the best way. Maybe I'll start doing that from now on. At any rate, out of habit, I do it with my fourth finger. And what is happening is that this B triad, however you play it, is alternating with an F sharp triad. And the notes are, well, the one note shared is the F sharp. The B goes down to a 
B flat, or I should call it an A, a sharp. And the D sharp becomes a C sharp. So basically, two triads alternating, an, a B triad and an F sharp triad. And both these chords are played against a static bass note, which is the B on the fifth string, second fret. And as you may be noticing, I am kind of already playing that idea or performing that idea of playing a bass note on on a stronger beat, a non-syncopated beat. Right there. I'm not sure if this is how the band performs it. And this is another note about my approach. Once I kind of listen to the band and come up with my own arrangement, I tend to abandon uh, any specific arrangements by the band and come kind of come up with my own ideas. It is possible that all the notes are played together, so you have your choice here of how you want to handle this rhythmically. At any rate, all together you really have only two chord shapes once, once all the notes are put together. One is this B triad with a B in the bass, so the notes are B, F sharp, B, and D sharp, and then F sharp over B. So again, the B, again the F sharp, and then A sharp and C sharp. introduction. The melody starts if you leave me now, with these two pickup notes, and this note is on the downbeat. So the two pickup notes are two F-sharp notes that are still under your fingers from the previous position. And when I play the the C sharp to D sharp, I continue to use the same back and forth between these two chords and play the melodic movement of C sharp to D sharp by moving these two chords or this F sharp over B to a B. These two melody notes are followed by another F sharp. So this F sharp is played just before moving to the next position and the next two melody notes. So after you played this second D sharp, you keep holding the chord in place, and while the chord is still ringing, pluck another F sharp before so I'll put it together this is an, a G sharp minor 11 and the notes from the bottom pitch wise are the G sharp 6th string 4th fret the F sharp on the 4th string 4th fret, the B, 3rd string 4th fret, and the C sharp on the 2nd string with my 1st finger. And the melody here is performed by plucking back and forth within the chord position. You don't have to do any movement, any further movement with your left hand. That line right there is performed by once hitting the chord, letting it ring, and continue to pluck back and forth these two notes in the rhythm of the of the melody. To remind you, I do it with a downstroke. So, so when this note occurs on a beat two or four, it is I perform it with a downstroke. That aside, 
can see that there's no movement with the left hand at all. As an alternative, you can also play. You can hold the chord, and instead of playing the B on the third string, you can release your first finger and play a B with the open B string. A third option, not as elegant, I think. You can play a bar on the fourth position, play a G-sharp minor chord, and kind of pluck now the C-sharp on the third string and release it to, to the B on that same third string on the fret 6 to fret 4. But this is the position that I use. Here is another chord position that gets these two mel melodic notes a step apart by playing just one position. The chord here is a D sharp minor 7. I place a partial bar with my first finger on, on strings 2, 3, and uh, 2, 3, and 4, although of these I only play the fourth string and the second string, those notes are the F sharp, which curiously has been part of every chord up until now, and this D sharp. And then with my third finger, I play this D sharp on the fifth string, sixth fret, and my pinky plays the C sharp on the third string. So this chord shape includes the notes D sharp, F sharp, C sharp and D sharp, and the melody is played on strings three and two. I'll play from the beginning of the melody. this bass movement in just a moment.